Hello everyone, welcome. I am Linda Israel and thank you for coming to this premiere video. Normally I am live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, but I am on vacation today, which is August the 23rd. So I thought I would do a quick video, just kind of give you guys some inspiration and hopefully you can get to creating. So I'll get into this really fast. To start with, I have a mop-up paper. And if you don't know what that is, that is where I spray through a stencil, then I use another sheet of paper and lay it on top of the stencil, stencil, and that mops up and we get a pattern. So that is what this page is, was using a mop-up page, and I thought I would decorate it. So to start with, I like to stamp on my papers first before I start gluing any embellishments because it will then make the paper bulky and it may not get a good impression. So to start with, I'm gonna grab a scrap of paper, and I want to stamp down this edge. So I'm just going to turn this sideways so it's easier for me. And I have the 1912 stamp by Beeline Designs, which is in my shop. It's made here in uh, Mustang, Oklahoma, not too far from me. I've got some Ranger ink, archival ink at Jet Black. And I'm going to start on the edge and stamp and stamp again. And then while I've got this stamp out, I'm going to turn it over and I want to stamp in this upper corner, so I'm just going to scamp, get rid of this stamp for a moment. I'll go ahead, again, since it's flat, I'm going to turn it the other way. And I have the, I think this is a flower bunch. And this is one of my stamps. I picked it because I like the little images. So I'm gonna ink it up and I'm going to stamp it on the edge and I'll alternate the height. I'll kind of rotate it every once in a while to kind of get a little different patterning. If y'all are here watching the live, you can definitely speak up in the chat and Robin will be here as well as some of my other moderators from the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. I don't know if I will be in the chat because I don't know if I have internet when this is premiered. So if I don't miss get to be here, sorry, I miss y'all and I'll see you next week. All right, so I've stamped all over. I think I like the way this is starting to look. I want to do, let's do a little collage here. So I grabbed a few things. These are some different elements from Calico Collage, like small ephemera. She has some words, she has some labels, and I just have like a little baggie that I put them in whenever I have leftover bits. I've got a book page here. This was just a scrap on my desk, so I'm just gonna rip it. And then let's apply some distressed inks around the edges. Okay, I like that. And then I thought I would use like this number five label. I'm gonna use these on another area, but I think it needs just a little bit more. I happen to have a little piece of fabric here. Let's see how this looks. It's my cut a piece. What if we were to glue this down like that? I don't know, maybe kind of busy looking. It may not look that good. I almost feel like I need a darker layer behind the flowers to get that to stand up. So let me see if I can grab a scrap of paper. I just found this. What if I just cut this? I don't want it super duper big, so. I think I've changed my mind about this piece. I think I'm gonna use it somewhere else. So instead, I want to use these pieces on the front here, and I'm gonna grab a different piece of fabric. I have this dark purple. Let's see if that does what I want it to do for this side. Okay, I think that works a lot better. So I'm gonna glue down this little piece of book page. I think it's out of dictionary. Then I'll glue down this fabric. I'm just using a Lean's Tacky Glue. That's what I normally use. I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter by not talking a whole lot in between. All right, so we'll put this here. I am using this little label that says Mrs. on it. And I didn't really want to see the Mrs. because this is supposed to be like a place card or 
elements you would use probably on a table. But I thought maybe if I put that label over the top of it, then it just kind of gives it a little layered effect and it covers up what the original purpose of this little label was supposed to be. Okay, I like that. So I think what I want to do is we're going to work on the inside here. And what if we made this like a little pocket down here at the bottom? So let's go over to the sewing machine. I think what I'll do is I'll put a little couple of dots of glue on here just to help hold this into place. And we're gonna stitch it into place. I may even try to fray the edge here. I'll just put that label right in the middle and we'll stitch around that outside edge. And I think I may stitch right around this little label to kind of give it a defined look. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm over at my sewing machine. It's a standard sewing machine. I've got regular thread. I've got it set for a zigzag stitch. I've got a regular sewing needle and I have black in my upper and my lower. I think the stitch width, I like to set it for 2.5 and 2.5 because mine's an electronic machine just play around with it and you know if there's a setting that you like but you don't always remember what it was make a sample card like on an index card do a few stitches and then write what the settings are to get that stitch on your machine and then you'll know what do i need to dial it to to get it all right we're just gonna stitch around the outside edge I leave my needle down and raise my presser for it when I get to the corner and then rotate my project and that kind of gives me a nice corner. And that's what it looks like with the stitches all the way around. Okay, so we're going to come back over here and I think I'm just going to place it down at the bottom here as, well, I, th I think I'll do it as a corner tuck spot. So we still see the stitches, or the stamping behind it. So I'll just put glue on two sides to make this little tuck spot. All right, so since I made this little pocket, let's make a little journal card to go in it or I'll find one real fast. I found this little tag. This is from Linda's Wisdom. So I thought that would just be kind of cute to stick down in there. And on this side, I've got this blank label that I thought would be kind of cute and maybe put the word affirmation on here. I think it needs a little distress ink. Norella's words, these are normally a lot bigger. And when I tell my computer to print them, I think I print the full sheet that's normally eight and a half by 11 down as a five by seven or even a four by six. And so it shrinks these words that are really big down to a smaller size. So this time, I think I'm just gonna glue this directly down in this upper corner. And then we'll put, I'll put it like that. I think I like it over here on the side. Sometimes I just like simple layers, not too thick on the page. All right, so on this portion, here is the more complicated item. I have here a piece of Braille paper. You can sometimes pick up books that are in Braille from like a library sale. Check out your local area and find out what the Metropolitan friends of the library sale, book sale is. And then you can go in, see what they have, and maybe you'll find something. Or maybe you know someone that works at the library or is a teacher, and that's how you can find stuff like this. So I've got this piece, and I thought it'd be pretty to make a tall pocket that would go over here. This paper is rather thin, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got a scrap of paper here. I'm going to glue down on this edge, the little scrap of paper, because the braille paper is so old, it tears very easily. And this way, when we use it as a pocket, hopefully it won't uh, leave any marks, or it won't tear. Hercules, my dog, I had my door shut, just pushed it open because he wanted to come in and see what I was doing. It's funny. All right, so next I have a scrap of fabric here and I have a little piece of lace let's see what this looks like do I want to put the lace on here like this and then maybe this little scrap of fabric I'm trying to decide if I want the skinny or the wide let's go with the skinny down 
I think I like that look. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a bead of glue right down this edge. And I'm gluing because I know I'm going to go to the sewing machine, and this will just help hold it in place so it doesn't shift on me until I get there. So that's why I like using Aline's Tacky Glue. It usually dries relatively quickly, and it doesn't gum up my machine like other um, glues that can remain sticky after it's dried even. Okay, I like that. So now I'm going to take another bead of glue here and we're going to put down I'm looking at this okay start here it's a great way to use up your scraps I'm going to put a little glue where this is turning under to kind of help it Lay flat. Lay flat, I say. Lay flat. All right, so I'm just going to trim off the excess. Give that just a moment to dry, and then we'll go to the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch down where the lace is leading onto that page, and then I'll just stitch down on this side. And it's okay that it will be a little bit wonky. It's, you know, junk. We're just using our leftover bits. Okay, again, I'm just using a regular sewing machine and zigzag stitch, and I'm just gonna stitch right down that center and then on the edge. And so now what I'm going to do is go around these, this side, the across the bottom, and then up the other side. All right, so there it is sewn together. All right, so now that I've sewn that, I know I want this to be a full pocket. And sometimes your paper is either too fragile to make it a self pocket that has the full size. So I'll just use scraps of paper and I will glue a one inch strip by whatever the length or width of my pocket area is. I'll use about half of this. So I'll come in the glue and then just slide it over a little bit. Sometimes I'll turn it over and look at this side to see if I've got it straight and smooth it out and then we'll cut off the excess and then we're going to glue up this side and that side. I'm using pages out of an old insurance education, community education manual. They go out of date and I'm no longer an insurance agent so I don't need the manuals, so I'm cutting them up and using them. Otherwise, they'd be trash. All right, so now I'm going to let that set for just a moment, and I'm going to grab a journal card, and let's make a card that'll go into the pocket. So it would go in this way. I happen to have a piece of this fabric that's left on my desk. I think I'm going to go from this end. I'm going to cut off this little area. And I think just something really simple on here. So I'm just going to put down a line of glue and then I'll lay down this fabric on the edge and then I'll go over to the sewing machine real fast and stitch down those edges. Just a little bit of glue along here just to help hold that piece that's curled flat for a moment. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to stitch down here and stitch right here and I'll be right back over here at the sewing machine. I think that looks pretty cute. Just simple stitching on there. Okay. What else can I put on here? I've got a little butterfly here. I think I'll put it on there like this so it's kind of sticking out the top here. So I'm just putting glue on half of it. 
and I lined up some numbers from Beeline Designs. I think this is Gaudi Caps and Numbers. I thought this might look interesting. It just says 1923. All right, so let's put this together. I've got my pocket piece. And before I put my pocket down, I've got this butterfly that I want to put on there. So I'll just put glue on half of it. And glue that down. I'm going to flip this over and I will fold back these strips of paper, even with the edge of what's going to be my pocket. I will trim this corner just a little bit. All right, so then I'll put glue on these tabs, and then this will give me the full use of my pocket. So if you have a tall journal card, maybe you've even made like a journaling notepad that you want to include in your journal, and it's really big, well, here's how you can make sure that you have the full use of your pocket, just add these tabs. So we have this nice colorful background. We have the pocket. And then we have a journal card that'll slide right in there like this. Let's put some words on here. I stamped earlier. I take my Aspire to be amazing and I use a strip of paper that is left over from when I fussy cut items. And I saw that I have a piece of brown paper sack and it's cut weird because it was just a scrap. And I think that'll fit right on there. I'm going to take the same flower bunch bouquet and stamp it onto this scrap. I like doing this because it changes that pattern or change it from playing to pattern. Let's add some distress inks with walnut stain and then let's layer this together. Well, I thought I would just do a real quick tutorial. This isn't going to be very long. We're about done here. And I'll show you another page that I made in the same style. And maybe this will give you some inspiration. If you don't have the Braille paper, maybe you have a book page that you can tear out. Maybe some junk mail and you can paint it if you want. I was trying to keep this relatively simple. You know, your fabric could be old clothing that you no longer wear that maybe isn't good enough to give away to the... Uh, charity shop so you can just rip it or tear it or cut it all right what do you think so this will be our first page that we come to and then you open it up we've got a little pocket here i didn't add any other embellishments up there it could be added if you want and then i left that little label so maybe you could write the date then we have the double butterflies and i just thought that was kind of clever to put the number just for fun down here at the bottom Here's one that I made earlier. So this one is with some coffee dyed paper. This is paper that was made by Beverly at Beeline Designs. And then I used the same concept of layering. I just kind of did it a little bit differently. I didn't put a pocket in here. I just layered the labels in the corners. I did the same stamping around the edge. And then here's what this looks like with more of a neutral tones using the butterfly. And this was some Italian paper that was given to me years and years and years ago from a lady that was doing wedding invitations. And she cut out the envelopes and then these were some of the scraps. And I just kept that very simple to put in here. So you kind of see the difference. Colorful versus vintage. Well, I hope you like just a quick tutorial just to kind of fill the time. Hey, do check out some of my other videos. Go back and watch some of the older ones. Yeah, maybe they're not near as crisp and clean as this one, but a lot of those techniques are still something that you can use today with whatever you have. And remember, when I show you a technique, don't get hung up on the actual product that I use. Look at the idea and figure out, oh, well, maybe I don't like butterflies, I love roses. We'll put roses in paste of the butterflies or maybe you have cats that you want to use or dogs or whatever it may be. Just kind of swap it around and play around with the supplies that you have.
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out here just for a little bit today. I'll be back on Monday. The, what is that date? I don't remember. I think it's like uh, the 1st of September or something like that. <laughs> Whatever Monday is, uh, I'll be live then. And then of course, check out my other tutorials that I have posted this past week. All right, everybody. Y'all have a great week. I will see you soon. Lots of love to you. Bye, everybody.